beginning with this video in this series, we're going to focus on um, actual examples that may you have to um, generate. So this example um, is titled Graph with Everything. So first, uh, we're going to get this grid line, nicely um, formatted grid line. And if you look at this graph, it has a vertical asymptote, it has horizontal asymptote, tangent line, and normal line. And there is some area under the curve. We have this uh, critical number that is not a local maxima. And there's a cusp. And there's some notation for a point that is missing and stuff like that. So we're going to go through this. Um, making this using Inkscape. First, uh, let me talk about that grid line I got. I actually went to GeoGebra and used this geometry application, and you can select the grid line, and they generated very nice um, for the most of the math instructor's taste. But uh, you can also generate that within the Inkscape if you go to Extension, if you go to Render, and underneath it, there is uh, grids. You can use Cartesian grids and polar grids. There are different types of grids. And you can generate that. But I don't think it's as, na as nice as what you get from GeoGebra. So I exported this um, grid line with nothing in it as a PDF file. And then you can bring that into the um, Inkscape. So um, this example we are looking at in here. It's not really particularly uh, had to be accurate with these all these uh, the grid line. So the trick is that I'm going to generate these graph first, and I'm going to put this grid line later and locate it in a suitable position so that it at least align nicely with this horizontal axis. So that's what we're going to do. If it has to be accurate to this graph, of course you can put that grid line first, and then you can work uh, on top of it which I will cover toward the end of the video. So let's first go ahead and uh, sketch this graph. Um, it's a long, um, long line, long curvy line. Somewhat, if you're not familiar with this handling, with this Bezier curve command, if you have to break it, you can break it anywhere, and you can still connect it. And if the connection is not smooth enough, we can edit it later. So here's uh, how we're going to do. I may have to come back in and to see what's going on, but I'm going to start with this vertical line. So let's go to the layer four. I'm going to choose this uh, Bezier curve, and I already reset it um, nicely. So that um, stroke width and all that, it's setting nicely. So to draw a curve, you have to click and drag. This is going to be the velocity vector. I know it's uh, nearly horizontal on the vertical uh, line, so I'm going to make it is more uh, nearly vertical and uh, you know maybe it's have to be perfectly vertical it's not supposed to be if it is a you know, vertical asymptote but as you can see it's a nearly vertical um, line in there here i'm going to introduce this horizontal um, tangent line in there you can hold the control key and click and drag not too long very short and it's going to generate and if you release horizontal tangent line there so here I'm going to introduce uh, the critical line um, with no local maximum, local minimum. So again, hold the control key and the drag um, to horizontally, and then it'll try to keep it horizontal if you, if you don't move around too much. Again, I'm going to make it shorter than what, what's seen in that um, demo video. And from here, I don't quite remember, so but that, let's do the local maximum. And then here, I'm going to deep down, um, local minimum there again, and but that's, uh, I'm going to hold it down later and go up there, slightly higher, somewhere there, and somewhere here I'm going to introduce that cusp. So for that, um, you can do that break later, and I prefer that later, but I'm going to do um, on demonstrations for some reason. And you made a mistake like that, and then you can, you know, you want to make it smooth, then you can right click. I think it's going to end it. And let me go ahead and change that to the solid line. That's what I wanted. 
and uh, there is a break there but if you want to continue you can continue by just clicking on that bezier curve again if you locate your cursor it's going to change the color that snapped into that and then just uh, left click <coughs> from there um, if you want to make it smooth we can fix this one later um, i don't remember exactly how this rest of the part looks like and control i'm going to do this uh, critical that is not local maximum but it's kind of going down and there from here i'm going to do a horizontal asymptote so i'm going to make it somewhere like that that's really um, like horizontal like this and double click and end it okay it's not as pretty as uh, what i created before so go ahead and choose a node and go back there and here and change that to smooth node first then you can change that to the smooth node go to do that again and you want to turn this one into a cusp then you can use this um, break this um, corner corner button and if you click on that you can handle this both handles separately just maybe to click it like this and then if you bring it inside like that and it's going to look like a cusp and the end in there okay so if you want to make this one a little bit um, longer then i'm going to make this one symmetric node smooth node if you you know do it like this and then maybe pull it down and make this one also symmetric node and hope that's a bit more even i'm not sure really works but maybe i can do that a little bit um that looks a bit more even so you can do this type of uh um, adjustment a little bit so that's that and i'd like to throw in this arrow in there so that it, it's indicating that it's asymptotic behavior so this is the last part so you can go to fill and stroke and change the end marker to this uh, arrow in there and if you want to Put that arrow there go to the beginning end marker and choose this arrow and and that's that so let's uh, draw this um, vertical asymptote um, just simply somewhere here and click on that and uh, click and release and hold the control key down there is a vertical like this and double click and we can change that later to a dotted line so somewhere here we put that is going to be eventually dotted line indicating this vertical asymptote also i can duplicate this one in there why don't i do that first let's go ahead and change that to um, dotted line in there and duplicate Control d and turn it around and to make it horizontal asymptote i'm going to make it um, shorter over there somewhere there indicating that's a horizontal asymptote so those are the two things let's take a look at what else you need to do i'm going to draw this um horizontal and uh, now the tangent line and the normal line i'm doing that it's confusing there so i'm going to draw the solid line um, this is going to be a dotted line but we'll fix that later and click and release somewhere like this and that's going to be a line you go to the fill and stroke change that to solid line and change the color of this one to the blue one by choosing these uh, blue and but you have to do shift blue not just click on the blue shift and blue that'll change that to blue line and go ahead and change the selection mode you can kind of locate it somewhere nicely over here as a tangent line and draw to the normal line the trick is that you do the same thing go to the bezier line and draw a line like this just try to make it as perpendicular as possible and that is not quite on this point it's supposed to be but we're going to do the parallel um, transport and then so about that parallel transport in there just double click in there and we're going to change that to red shift red and then do the selection mode switch back to the edit mode and then you can move around and it's going to keep this perpendicularity there 
So you can put that nicely over there to create this um, line in there. Also, I had that little dot in there for the intersection point. That's the circle mode. And I'm going to use, I don't know, um, hold control key to make it perfectly circle. The color was uh, the thing that I wasn't sure. I'm going to use this dark green, also stroke shift dark green. Everything is green now. And, uh, you know, don't sit too silly big, but you can make it a bit small. That looks all right. Put it in there. So that will be that. You can zoom in a little bit to locate it in the better position if you like. So, so that's that. Let's check on the other one there. Um, so let's create a fill area in there. First, I'm going to do this horizontal line that is supposed to serve as the horizontal axis. So let's go ahead and do that. This one long horizontal line, I'm going to put it here. Click and release and hold the control key. Double click first, change the color to the black, shift black, and the selection, and kind of locate it somewhere nicely here, somewhere like that. And I want it to make sure that's a dotted, a non dotted line, and that's that. So, the next thing is the shading part. So, if you want to do this uh, area under the curve, I will use this um, Bezier curve and go somewhere here. And click and release and hold control double click here and that's left bound somewhere here click and hold control double click and that created a little area in there and I'm going to adjust this end part later um, but we want to color that part and we can use this bucket fill click on that bucket fill if you click on that it's going to create that color if I want the blue change that to blue and usually lighter colors are better for most of the presentation so go to fill and stroke go to fill area and there's this hsl hue level and saturation level and lightness you just change that lightness to a lot lighter usually easy on the eye always when you do this bucket fill it'll create extra boundary so you can go and and shift um, x mark will and delete that boundary in there. So let's go to this arrow in there, selection mode. So you can see they created this fill in area. You go there. And I'm going to put that into kind of to the bottom um, bottom area there, all the way to the bottom, so that it goes below this all this boundary. Now I want to change this boundary to the dotted line. And if it happened to be difficult to select that one, always use Alt key. And if you choose Alt key, it'll try to go right below. But this one's okay because I already sent this one all the way to the back. So I could choose that easily. And then I'm going to change that to dotted line. Go to fill and stroke, stroke style. And there is this dotted line mode. And it's not absolutely necessary, but I'm going to try that. And here I'm going to do the paste style. The style is stroke. Um, style of this stroke is dotted line you can paste it to this one in here so you can do Control c and click on the other one rather than Control v that will be paste i think it's Control shift v so it's a paste style Control shift v shift Control v i think it's the same thing so if i do it here it's going to paste the style that includes the width of the style as well so i will zoom in making sure that it doesn't go over. So this one as well, using this vertical transformation there, making sure it's in, in line with that. So I created this fill area. You can do that here as well. That part will be easy. Bucket fill and put that in the color and remove the stroke, shift X in there. And to change the color, you can just simply take that region and control C and put it in there and control shift b that will paste a color or you can use this um, color picker as well um, so making sure that i select this one and send it all the way back that usually looks better so um, another thing is that it fill an open area in there that i'm going to do i can just go ahead and copy the circle i already did control d 
and drag it over here and make it a little bit bigger and make it sure it looks okay. And um, we want to fill this one with a white color and then the boundary is a black one like this. And if you make it smaller, I think it keeps this um, width, stroke width. So it doesn't look bad. So if you move it over there, as you can see, it's filled with a white color. So um, and that, that makes a difference. So that's, um, that's the thing. So let's go ahead and check if we have covered everything. I think we did. Only thing that is left is getting these, um, what is it? The, the, grid, uh, the grid background that we will get from layer three. So I got that from layer three or from the, you know, GeoGebra that is in a PDF form. So if I paste it, you will see it'll go um, all over this, right? So it's blocking the whole thing. So you have to send this one all the way to the back. And then we have this one in there. So I'm going to move this um, so that it's um, at least this horizontal axis, X axis is in line with nicely with the um, X axis. I put it in there so I can select that X axis now. I can uh, remove it, making sure adjust it a little bit more in there. Okay. It wasn't perfect there, but um, you can at least take that and then you know stretch a little bit. And that kind of thing is always um, excellent here. All right. So, um, and another thing that next thing, last thing I want to do is what if we want to do more accurately on this grid line? And we're going to put this uh, grid line first and then draw on top of it. And that you can do. And for that, I'm going to do that in the next layer. And I'll introduce this locking the background part. So let's do that one. All right, I got this grid line pasted another layer. And if you want to do this line in here, and then you can just, for example, if you have a draw a curve from there, you know, click and drag, introduces velocity, and then do it here again, double click, and then delete this all the fill in area by Xing in there. So you can do that, but Accidentally, if you hit it there, and it always moves this uh, grid around, so that could be annoying. Um, there's one thing you can do whenever you have to select this one, for example, over this grid line. If you just want to select that, you can, of course, click on that. But you can also drag it like this. But that was the intention. You wanted to draw the rectangular box, but it accidentally you know, selected this uh, background. I think it's for that. I think it's a shift to drag or something like that. Yeah, the shift drag is correct. If you hold shift key and then click on the drag in your selection mode, it'll allow you to not uh, select the background. Shift and drag, and you can do that. But in all, it's very annoying. Then um, what you can do is that if you select this one and right click, and there is this. Um, lock selected object part if you lock it and then next time if you select it and it's not going to do anything so it is kind of locked and fixed in that position so your you know selection and do all the rest of the part is easy to unlock it um, this is probably not the best way to do it but this is what i could figure out there's unlock object belows if you do that and everything that is in different layers is selected um, but if you click on that object one more time, it is uh, not unlocked. And then that's uh, that's just some of the things that you probably want to do. But uh, lots of good things are available in that GeoGebra. It has wonderful uh, the place to get the standardized um, shapes and all that. But sometimes you want to customize, you want to do a little bit more and um, Inkscape it's as a powerful tools, and that's um, how you do it. So that concludes our video.